Okay, the uh, final item of business is a Members' Business Debate on Motion 4117 in the name of Alistair Allen on supporting Great Berner as uh, community land uh, buyout. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. I'd invite members who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons or place an R in the chat function if they're joining us online. And I call on Alistair Allen to open the debate for around seven minutes, Dr Allen. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you um, to members for staying this late in the evening for this debate. Since its re-establishment, this Parliament has helped empower many communities uh, beginning to address centuries uh, of injustice in the way that land has so often been gifted, sold and sometimes neglected. Around 57 per cent of Scotland's rural land is in private hands, uh, and I should say that many of these landowners work hard to develop their estates and engage reasonably with the communities who live and work in them. However, this is not the case uh, when the landlord turns out to be an absentee with no visible plans for the estate other than the extraction of money. The Land Reform Community Empowerment Act seeks to ensure that landowners uphold their responsibilities and, particularly if they are not doing that, to provide a legal basis for communities to negotiate uh, a purchase of the land. Now, the island of Great Bernera has been connected by a short bridge to the west coast of Lewis since 1953. The construction of this bridge incidentally came about only after islanders threatened to create their own informal causeway by obtaining their own explosives. And the people of Bernera have a long history of having to battle for their own rights. In, the, in 1874, Bernera, the Bernera riot um, crofters resisted the forced evictions which their then landlord attempted as part uh, of the wider Highland clearances. Bernerist crofters eventually won their case against that landlord in court. In 1972, the islands, uh, the islands of Great and Little Bernera were bought by Count Robin de, de la Lan Mirrelees, a colourful man whose wartime exploits in the Balkans were said to have partly inspired the character of James Bond in his friend Ian Fleming's novels. His title as a count was bestowed, I understand, by the government of San Marino. All of which said, the count did lead a fairly simple life on the island, where I visited him a couple of times. He died in 2012, leaving the islands to his grandson in Germany, uh, Siran de la Lan, but told islanders that they should have the first option on buying the island should it ever be put up for sale. In 2015, 85% of Bernera's residents voted in favour of a community buyout. The district valuer set a sales figure of £70,000, reflecting the island's status under crofting tenure. And, uh, the, the family uh, of, the, of the owner considered this sum to be too low. And despite numerous efforts by islanders, including uh, some of whom visited uh, him in Germany in 2017, um, the the, those negotiations got uh, not very far. Um, there was an intention to purchase through a combination of grants um, from various sources, but the Dillalan family stalled, not naming a price at which they would be willing to sell. In 2020, the Trust began the process of pursuing a Crofton community buyout, uh, and in March I contacted Bernard as landlord with a request to meet him to discuss the various barriers which the estate was by then reported to be putting in place hampering local development and blocking legitimate transactions with tenants. After an initial agreement to meet, my office have followed up three further times to be told that there are currently no suitable dates for Mr De La Lan and his father, um, but that they might get back in touch shortly. This is a tactic that I understand has been employed repeatedly um, regarding the island's buyout efforts, as well as with individual tenants. One Bernard Crofter, Mr Neil Macaulay, has been seeking to exercise his own legal right to purchase his own croft for a number of years now. I am told that rather than respond to any emails on this, Bernard's landlord has simply ignored him. Mr Macaulay's daughters want to move to Bernard with their young families and hope to build long-term homes on their father's croft. But they can't do this until their father is allowed to buy it, which generally requires the cooperation of the landlord, and the family's next step may involve the courts. Another constituent, Mr Ian Murdo MacDonald, had been hoping to retire to his family home in Bernera, but had, uh, had to put the property on the market instead to pay for his late mother's care home fees. For 18 months, Bernera Estate refused to agree to its formal decrofting to allow the sale uh, until Mr MacDonald uh, was 
prepared to cough up a completely arbitrary sum of £16,000, adding significant stress to an already difficult situation. This kind of sum might not mean very much to an absentee landlord, but it is impossible for most people to magic out of thin air, and this practice is unheard of, I should say, on other estates. My constituent stood his ground, and the landlord has now finally agreed to allow the sale to be finalised without this completely unjustifiable fee. However, unless something changes soon, Berner's population will continue to, to decline. <clears throat> the island school and shop have both closed in recent years, and while there are young families who want to move back to the area, the lack of scope for local development under the current owner means it is impossible to reverse the island's depopulation by building any new affordable housing. Presiding officer, part three of the Land Reform Act provides for a hostile bid by a community. This route has never been taken, although it has been threatened previously, where landlords were seen to be particularly uncooperative. Uh, the owner of Bernera seems to be determined to paint himself into that corner. So I would... Uh, I hope the Minister may be able to say in summing up something about uh, the contact which um, the Government and its officials and the, the Land Fund uh, are able to have with my constituents to try uh, to resolve this situation, because, um, Presiding Officer, um, according to the um, Scottish Land Fund, private states in Scotland stay in the hands of the same families for an average of 122 years, and I sincerely hope this does not prove to be the case with Bernera. Presiding officer, the island of Bernera should belong to the people who live there and to those whose families have worked the land there and fished from the surrounding seas for generations. Morally and culturally, the land is, of course, already theirs. We must now continue to do all we can to support the Great Bernera Community Development Trust to successfully take legal ownership so that the island's community can begin to develop and to thrive once again. Thank you very much, uh, Dr Allen. A gentle reminder to those who haven't yet pressed the request to speak buttons to do so um, as soon as possible. And I call the first speaker in the open debate, which is Donald Cameron, who joins us remotely. For around four minutes, Mr Cameron. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I refer to my register of interests as uh, the owner of a land holding in the Highland Council region? very grateful to Alistair Allen on securing debate time on this issue, and I also want to commend the work of the Great Bernera Community Development Trust. I was first elected to Parliament in 2016. I said I would always seek to stand up for the most rural and remote communities who often feel that Edinburgh is as far away as London, and that decision-making which reflects the concerns of such communities doesn't always happen in the Scottish Parliament. In that vein, I welcome the opportunity to debate this particular case and I hope that shows that we can discuss important matters such as land ownership and land reform, both in general terms and specifically as they affect our constituents. Before turning to the precise nature of the aims of the Great Bernera Community Development Trust, can I reiterate the support of the Scottish Conservatives behind many of the general principles that underpin land reform? It's often forgotten that the very first moves towards greater community ownership of land in Scotland were undertaken by the Conservative governments of the late 1980s and early 1990s, something that prominent land reform academics such as Professor Jim Hunter have acknowledged. Even in the more recent past, our benches have noted support for improved transparency of land ownership as a means of tackling tax avoidance. We've also noted support for community empowerment, and it's interesting that aspects of the Community Empowerment Act 2015 were in part derived from UK government localism legislation. It's patently clear that while there is a very long way still to travel, we have been moving to a greater diversity in land ownership in Scotland, with many successful community landowners. I see that particularly in the Highlands and Islands from where I'm speaking tonight. From Egg, to Gear, to Carloway, to West Harris, there is a plethora of different community landowners which have been not just successful, but transformative in terms of what they've achieved. Turning to the specific case, Alistair Allen touched upon in his speech, there is clearly a long-standing con and contentious issue between this particular Community Devel Development Trust and the island's landowner. And I share the worry of the great Bernera community about this regrettable turn of events. 
I'm grateful to Alastair Allen for setting out the precise history and detail of the issues here, which as the constituency MSP, he will be well versed in. I cannot add much to that detail, but I am very concerned to know, to note, that the local school and local shop on the island have closed, further adding to the unnecessary worry faced by the local community. And I touch briefly upon the more general issue of island depopulation, which I feel the issues on Great Burner are tied to. There are concerning trends of depopulation across our island, and that is a huge cause for concern. The fact that the population of the Western Isles in particular is expected to drop by 20% come 2041 highlights the harsh reality of this issue. Now, there are things that we can do to reverse these trends, and we need to ensure that connectivity between our islands and the mainland is reliable. We need to continue to invest in the rollout of broadband and better mobile connectivity, and ensure that more investment is directed to delivering more social and affordable housing to give young islanders an incentive to stay. It's also critical that we support job creation where possible. I recently met with one business which is looking to create several new jobs on Harris, for example, but faces real issues with getting the raw materials to set that up on the island. We in this parliament have an important role to play. Deputy Presiding Officer, I am grateful to Alice Island for highlighting the, important, the specific issue around um, Great Burner, and I extend an offer to work on a cross-party basis where possible to secure a more desired outcome for the community there. As I said in my opening remarks, community buyouts often work extremely well and can be powerful forces for good in local communities. And I hope that a resolution can be found in this instance and in other instances where communities are struggling to own land where it is in the wider interest of the area that they live in and represent. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Cameron. I now call on Ruth Maguire to be followed by Mercedes Vialba for around four minutes, Ms Maguire. Presiding officer, I congratulate Alistair Allen on bringing this debate to the Scottish Parliament and I'm happy to make some brief remarks in support of his motion, recognising the work of the Great Burner Community Development Trust towards a Crofton community buyout and the development of their island. The Land Reform and Community Empowerment Act seeks to ensure that landowners uphold their responsibilities and to provide a legal basis for communities to negotiate a purchase of the land. Because, as Alistair Allen said in opening the debate, an absentee landlord might legally own and control the land, or in this case the island, the question remains though, morally should they? And whilst we might say that morally and culturally the land already belongs to the people there, it is the case that particularly when we look at the experience of the citizens of Bernera, that in order to develop and thrive, legal ownership could be seen as crucial. I have to say it is hugely regrettable that the lack of cooperation from the absentee landlord has delayed and halted progress in that regard. I am sorry that the legislation in place to deal with that, namely the Land Reform and Community Empowerment Act, has not delivered for that particular community yet. I have to say as well, reports of the highly unusual demands for payments from local crofters from an absentee landlord are frankly alarming. The community themselves know what is required to sustain the population there. The loss of the school, care home and shop, combined with rising house prices and the difficulties in developing, contribute to a challenging picture for the community. And this is not just a matter for the Highlands or indeed rural Scotland, but of concern to urban communities too. The fact that MSPs will contribute from around the country this evening reflects just how important the topic of who owns our land and assets and what they are used for is. Land reform is defined as changes to land ownership and land use in the public interest. The issue of land ownership in Scotland can be a contentious one. It is of concern to many of us that large swathes of our country are being held by only a handful of private and, in many cases, non-resident landowners. As the Centre for Local Economic Strategy notes, Land ownership matters because it is an expression of economic and political power. The concentration of rural land ownership in the hands of only few, a few people is a structural problem, particularly when it results in land use that extracts wealth from local communities to their detriment and that of the wider public interest. The situation in Bernera highlights this. In closing, I wish them every success in their endeavours. I believe ownership of the land being with the folk who live there will help redirect wealth back into the local economy and place control and benefits into the hands of the local people, something which is right and just. Presiding officer. 
Thank you very much indeed, Mr Maguire. I now call Mr Eddie Vialba to be followed by Ariane Burgess again for around four minutes. Uh, Mr Vialba. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by thanking Alistair Allen for bringing forward this important motion for debate today. Land ownership remains one of the greatest injustices facing us in Scotland because ownership of Scotland's land remains heavily concentrated in the hands of a wealthy few at the expense of communities. Communities who, as Alistair Allen and um, Ruth Maguire so poignantly put it, have a moral and cultural case for ownership of that land. And this couldn't be more clearly seen than on Great Burnera. After all, here is a local community which has found its aspiration to purchase land frustrated by Scotland's inadequate land laws. Despite residents seeking a sustainable and prosperous future through community land ownership, progress continues to be delayed by a lack of cooperation from the island's absentee landlord. And in the meantime, this same landlord continues to exploit what should be the community's land for his own gain by demanding significant payments from local crofters. Great Burnera is the prime example of what happens when Scotland's land laws fail to secure the public interest. This is what happens when a disinterested landowner is able to stifle the needs and aspirations of a local community. But the truth is, landlords can get away with this because Scotland's land laws favour their interests over those of local communities. Even after 20 years of devolution, our land laws lag far behind other European countries when it comes to protecting the public interest. In Scotland, it's left to communities with few resources to try to exercise complex legal rights in the face of a landowner seeking to frustrate their ambitions. And as things currently stand, the Scottish Government has no right to formally ask if a landowner is acting in or against the public interest. So that's why we urgently need radical and progressive reform of our land laws. Ministers must be given the power to intervene and ask the public interest questions that need to be asked. And they must also be able to require the compulsory sale of land when the public interest demands it. While the Scottish Government's commitment to bring forward a land reform bill is welcome, I'm worried that it will fail to deliver the radical change that's needed. So that's why I will be bringing forward a land justice bill later this year. I'm sure the Minister will remind us today that landowners have property rights, and my bill will respect that. But my bill won't hide behind the timid interpretations of what those property rights might mean, which I fear are likely to emanate from government lawyers. Powers are needed not just when land is at the point of changing hands. They're also needed when the landed class, often absentee landlords, frustrate the legitimate interests of the people. That's why I'll propose through my land justice bill so that the people of Great Burnera and other communities have their interests advanced far more easily than at present. I hope my fears about the Scottish Government's land reform bill will prove to be unfounded and it will have my support if it delivers the truly bold and radical change needed. But Parliament deserves to have an opportunity to consider truly progressive land laws and I'll make sure that it has that opportunity in my Land Justice Bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Yelba. I now call Ariane Burgess to be followed by Kenneth Gibson again for around four minutes, please. Ms. Burgess. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I also want to express my gratitude to Alistair Allen for securing time for this debate. And I'd like to begin by recognising the huge efforts the Great Burner Community Development Trust have made to try and complete the sale of the, croft, of the crofting land it's deeply disappointing that the landlord, an absentee landlord, is refusing to cooperatively engage with the community. For a rural community to be rendered dependent on what is a feudal landlord should be something of the past, and it's not reflective of the progressive Scotland that the Scottish Greens are striving for. I understand that the Bernera community has sought to use Crofting community right to buy powers, but it has been challenging given it is a complex and time-consuming process. Other communities across Scotland have instead made progress by reaching amicable agreements with the landlord to complete a buyout. Unfortunately, that has not been the case to date in Burnera. 
and I urge the landlord to work with the community in the spirit of goodwill. As Alistair Allen pointed out, this is not the first time in Berner's history that the Crofters have fought for the right to own the land that they live and work on. In the 1870s, Crofters grazing land was reduced to a smaller and smaller proportion of the island to make way for sporting estates. The Crofters upheld their end of the agreement paying rents and working to improve the land, but it wasn't before long some agents of the landlord arrived with eviction notices. Following local arrests, some remaining crofters took it upon themselves to march to Stornoway to defend their rights and get a fair hearing. Unfortunately, more legal wrangling was to come, ending in a court case. But in 1874, the crofters were found to be not guilty of the charges against them, and eventually the case played a part in the first successful challenge of the 1886 Crofting Act. And so the Burner Islanders who marched that day took some of the first steps towards land reform in Scotland. Last week, I visited the Islanders on Egg to join them in celebrating 25 years since their successful community buyout of the island. And I couldn't help being struck by the amazing possibilities that can be achieved by a community that is in control of its land and resources. We gathered in their brand new community hub at the pier. This hub provides a fine tea room along with food and craft shops and an office space with stunning southerly sea views as well as being a considerable local economic driver. As part of the celebrations, I joined the Egg Electric Tour to learn about Egg's pioneering renewable ele electricity system, the first island to generate power from water through hydro, wind with turbines and the sun utilising a large solar array. And as they said, their electricity is now cheaper than electricity on the mainland. And along with electricity, the islanders also have a successful and growing forestry initiative. Great Bernera's residents want those same opportunities for generations of islanders to come. And it is a responsibility for all of us elected to this parliament to ensure that Land Reform Act's work to support successful buyouts. I know that the government intends to bring forward a land reform bill later this session, and I hope we can tackle some of the issues raised tonight through that, including developing a public interest test for the sale of large land holdings and exploring what we can do to tackle overseas land owners. In closing, while preparing for this debate, I came across a poem by Bernera Crofter Ian McAgoan who lived on Bernera at the close of the 19th century and, I wit and witnessed the first push for land reform on the island. The poem in English is titled Spirit of Kindness and is translated by Derek Thompson. And I'll share a few lines. They handed over to the snipe, the land of happy folk. They dealt without humanity, with people who were kind. Because they might not, be, not, they might not drown them, they dispersed them overseas. A thraldom worse than Babylon was the plight they were in. Almost 150 years on from when those lines were drafted, we must start a new chapter for Scotland's crofting communities and the Great Burnerers land buyout. Thank you very much indeed, Mr Burgess. I now call on Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Rhoda Grant uh, around four minutes. Mr. Gibson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I too congratulate Alistair Allen for securing this evening's important and interesting debate. Uh, beautiful Great Burner on the rugged west coast of Lewis is a population of just over 250. It was linked to the Isle of Lewis in 1953 with the first pre-stressed concrete bridge in Europe uh, and welcomed 4,000 visitors on its opening day. The bridge was only built after islanders threatened to build their own causeway by dynamiting the hillside. The island boasts the first planned crofting township in the Outer Hebrides, created in 1805, with village boundaries still in use today by the community. And Great Berlin boasts the, boasts the marvel that is Bosta, the most well-preserved late Iron Age village ever found in Scotland, revealed in 1993 following an Atlantic storm and excavated three years later. It features a series of preserved houses inhabited from the early first century with some houses virtually intact. Great Bernary's resilient crofters resisted the Highland clearances, sparking the Bernary riot of, two, of 1874, in which the first victory for small tenants was recorded as they refused evictions and rent increases for expanding sports estates. No doubt that is why the island was not cleared like so many other tragic uh, Highland islands, such as Terancey or Mingley, both also in the Outer Hebrides. 
This catalyzed future resistance in what became known as the Crofters Law of Scotland's modern land reform, rooting from its outcome, which ironically the island's future now depends on. From 1962 until his death in 2022, the island, as Alistair Allen said, was owned by Robin Delan Millies. Uh, of course, he uh, is one of the people, uh, as Alistair Allen also said, um, who is associated with the James Bond character. But then so is Fitzroy McLean and loads of other of these landlords. So I take it all with a pinch of salt. However, he offered the islanders first refusal on buying the island, and approximately 85 per cent of the island's population voted in favour. However, the new absentee landlord would not exceed. Get Bernard Community Development Trust continues to try to negotiate with the island's landlord to purchase the island, despite underhand tactics and a lack of cooperation or a willingness to engage in any meaningful negotiations. Today, the community is mainly dependent on lobster fishing, crofting and tourism, eh, with the Outer Hebrides welcoming over 200,000 tourists annually. And the islanders' priority is to bring their community into ownership for its economic and social benefits to secure a stronger and more sustainable future. The community hopes to ensure money is invested back into the island and provide employment opportunities to encourage younger generations to remain on the island, helping to ensure, helping to ensure its sustainability. With a growing number of people moving from the mainland to the Western Isles, house prices on Great Bernard have dramatically increased, pricing many out of the housing market. Therefore, the need for affordable housing is crucial to ensure elders can afford to remain and, uh, and ensure it remains an attractive community. But, of course, that cannot happen with the current landlord. So uh, we need to have the, the community uh, take uh, control of their land. And support is also required to renovate housing to ensure accessibility for elderly islanders. Currently, 70 per cent of people in the Hebrides are living on community-owned land, and community buyouts have been successful. And we heard just from Ariane Burgess uh, of her own experiences on Egg, but also in, in Gia, North Harris and West Harris uh, and Ulver, to name a few, generating significant employment opportunities and affordable housing, and highlighting a bright future for Great Bendera uh, should materialise uh, when the buyout eventually happens, as I'm sure we all want it to. The tiny the community already takes a democratic approach on local matters, surveying islanders to ensure decisions are made in the best interest of residents and the island, highlighting their capabilities in taking ownership of the island and planning its future. As the MSP for two island communities, Arne and Cumbria, I can appreciate firsthand the hand that an unresponsive landlord can have, leading to depopulation and indeed damage to an island's economy. And I am in full support of the community uh, buyout in Greater Bernera. Uh, islands have a unique set of needs, and I am proud the Scottish Government continues to support island and rural communities. Presenting officer, I am delighted by the support the Scottish Land Fund has provided to Great Bernera, offering the cost of the land and funding the part-time post of a commercial manager and administrative officer to aid the community's future as a community-owned island. And I hope Great Bernera will successfully utilise Part 3 of the Land Reform Scotland Act, and I trust ministers will understand and sympathise with the elders' reasoning behind this endeavour. I also support continued le uh, land reform to ensure we are not in this situation again. And I end by urging the current landlord of Great Bernera to engage and cooperate with the, the Island Community Development Trust uh, to reach a fair agreement that will reap huge benefits for current islanders and future generations on Great Bernera. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Gibson. I now call the final speaker in the open debate, Rhoda Grant, for around four minutes, please, Ms Grant. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I congratulate Alistair Allen on securing this debate as well. This situation arises wholly from the failure of the Scottish Government to legislate to make the community right to buy possible in the face of a hostile landlord. They have had 15 years to do this, and they must urgently bring forward new, a new land reform bill. The battles, particularly in Park, showed that the 2003 legislation, while well-intentioned, was far too complicated in the face of a determined landowner. If there is serious intent to help communities like Bernera, this would have been fixed long ago. New legislation must ensure that anyone who owns large areas of land in Scotland must do so in the public interest, and if they do not, there must be powers to remove that land from their ownership. Of course, there needs to be checks and balances in any system, but at the end of the day, people like Kieran Merrilies should not be put in charge of a cat, far less the people's future and well-being. Indeed, there are more powers in Scotland to remove a cat from a bad owner than there are to remove land. Bernera is a community in decline for the same reasons as many others. The key issues are housing and jobs. 
Both can only be addressed with access to land. It's scandalous in a place that has so long been associated with a history of resisting landlordism that it is still cursed by this 21st century version of absentee landlordism without government lifting a finger to stop it. The Bernera buyout has been mooted for more than a decade, but it can go nowhere because the intransigence of an individual sitting in Frankfurt. And that shames Scotland and it shames the Scottish Government. In the face of similar hostility, other communities don't even bother to try and go and have a buyout. This case shows us what is wrong with Scottish land owning patterns and while the Scottish Government procrastinate, people suffer. My colleague Mercedes Villalba is consulting on setting a limit for the size of land that a person can own. The limit would of course disinvest Mr Medley's of the majority of his, the land he owns in Scotland, which would be beneficial um, to those who were no longer held hostage by his, his unreasonable and unlawful demands. He states that he is being advised by Savills to extort huge amounts of money from house sales in the islands, something that has no legal bearing. And if this is the case, and I sincerely hope it is not, it begs the question, should they be practising in Scotland? Agents representing these estates have to take some responsibility for the abuses that are being perpetrated. In this case, a 26-year-old student in Frankfurt hides behind a legal firm in Stornoway who seemed powerless to extract any communication from him, leaving people in dreadful circumstances and the community in dismay. The agents for these landowners need to consider whether they are representing the interests of the community by continuing to represent them and provide them with a shield of virtual anonymity. The lack of progress by the SNP on land reform is a disgrace, and the work done in the early years of Holyrood has never been built on or advanced. That is the hidden scandal. Bernera symbolises that bigger issue. Thank you, uh, Ms Grant. I now call on the Minister to respond to the debate for around seven minutes. Mr Arthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I uh, commend uh, Dr Allen for securing this debate and also for the way in which he powerfully narrated the circumstances of his constituents in Great Bernera and also the way in which he um, explained the powerful and intrinsic links between land ownership, development and sustaining a growing population. I can also recognise the contributions from colleagues across the Chamber that were delivered in a, a constructive and, and thoughtful tone as well. Presiding officer, it, it really should uh, never be the case that any landowner should be able to exert such control over the lives of those who happen to live on land that they own. And that is especially so in this case, given that the previous owner had already given the community first refusal to purchase Great Bernera following his death in 2012. And when it was put to the community, 85% of them turned out to vote on the buyout. In total, 142 backed the purchase of the island, with 37 against. The Community Trust received £100,000 from the Scottish Land Fund, financed by the Scottish Government, to help purchase the 2,260 hectares of the Great Bernera estate, including 69 crofts around Kirkibost, Thompson, Hacklett, Breaklet and Croyer. Ideas to boost the island's economy uh, range across various areas, including types of development and renewable energy, and indeed appear. So why hasn't this happened? Other crofting communities have faced similar challenges and have still succeeded. In 2007, Golston Estate Trust took ownership of 22,000 hectares in the north of the Isle of Lewis. On the same island in 2015, Park Trust took ownership of 11,000 hectares. Neither of these was without their challenges, most notably in the Park Trust case, but they both succeeded. The most obvious answer lies in the tenacity and belief of the community themselves. Both communities believe that they could take on the running of the land around them, improving the circumstances of their own community in doing so. Both communities were determined to see that through, no matter what obstacles were put in their way. The Scottish Government brought in legislation aimed at giving rights to communities to purchase land, and the Crofton community right to buy was aimed 
at just this type of situation. However, it is notable that neither of these two successful groups concluded the transfer of the estates using this right to buy. Both, in the end, concluded the transfer through a negotiated sale. And that should always be the preferred way to achieve these outcomes, where both parties reach a common ground on the way forward. In the case of Park, it took several years and a few legal challenges, but it still got there. Whilst neither community concluded using the right to buy, it is equally worth noting that, without those rights, it is unlikely that either would have got a seat at the table. Both communities began the right to buy process and, through that, brought the owners of those estates to a position of either negotiating with the communities or face a compulsory purchase through the right to buy. That is a strong tool for the community to have at its disposal. In the case of Great Bernera, the community are facing some of the same challenges that the Park Trust faced. They have an owner who, through various means at their disposal, is not willing to entertain any discussions with the community about purchasing the whole estate. They are exerting influence on those who live on land that they own, to what ends we can only speculate, making it more and more difficult to plan for any kind of future. Any owner of land has responsibility to the land itself and to those who call it their home. The Scottish Government's Land Rights and Responsibility Statement, which was published in 2017 and is the first of its kind in the world, says exactly that in two of its principles, namely, the holders of land rights should exercise these rights in ways that take account of their responsibilities to meet high standards of land ownership, management and use, acting as the stewards of Scotland's land resources for future generations we contribute to sustainable growth and a modern successful country. And additionally, there should be a greater collaboration and community engagement in decisions about land. If the Great Bernard Community Development Trust feel that this isn't being followed, then there is the Crofting community right to buy. The Trust have already been investigating this route and have been in discussion with Scottish Government officials. Admirably, they have been continuing to pursue the negotiation route, and I recognise that it is a view that the time has now come for a more forceful line of action. Officials are currently considering how the Trust could access this route and will continue to do so, as they did in the Park case and the Golson case. President Officer, looking forward, and this has been touched on in the debate, the 2021-22 programme for government committed to a further land reform bill in this parliamentary session. Over the summer, we will be working with all stakeholders, including landowning interests, to develop policy and legislative solutions to progress our proposals. We will undertake a, a wide-ranging consultation on proposals for the bill, which we aim to introduce by the end of 2023. Our proposals will be fully compliant with ECHR, including the right to private property and the terms of the current devolution settlement. But they will also be ambitious, aimed at making sure that land plays its full part in delivering the vision set out by the Just Transition Commission, a fairer, greener future for all. This reflects the principled position of the Scottish Government and their explicit commitment to respecting, protecting and fulfilling human rights for every member of society. The programme for government also committed to doubling the Scottish Land Fund to £20 million by the end of this Parliament. The fund was put in place to make it possible for community groups to apply for awards to purchase assets, no matter which route that ownership takes. I would like to close by both congratulating Great Bernard Trust for continuing to persevere in the face of adversity and to encourage them to pursue this by any means at their disposal. And indeed, in responding to Dr Allen's specific re request, I, I do hope that the Land Fund will now be able to enter into more detailed discussions with the Buyout Trust to examine the options that they wish to pursue. The Crofting Community Right to Buy has never been used to completion, but maybe it is about time that it was. In this case, it may be able to bring the owner to the negotiating table, but if not, then I feel that this community is the type to follow through on their plans and take this as far as they can until they become the owners of the land. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. That concludes the debate, and I close this meeting of Parliament.